Morning, everyone. So, uh, yeah, beautiful snowy morning, except for when your custodians are out and you get to work and you realize, oh, shoot, <laughs> nobody's here to shovel the walk. So that, that does say something about Roger and Dave, though. I've been here for like four and a half years and I've never once like come to church and everything wasn't like cleared perfectly. So they're both, kind of, they're both at six. So it's like, oh, OK, so here we go. <laughs> Uh, kind of one of those things. Sometimes you, uh, yeah, it's we a lot of the times what what Dave and Roger do behind the scenes uh, we don't always see or think about, but they definitely do really really good work because everything usually runs smoothly and is fixed and looking good. So yeah, today I'm thankful for them because um, yeah, shoveling snow, spreading salt, I don't mind it, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> so. Of course, I don't know who's, whose favorite it is. So anyway, today we're going to dive in uh, to chapter 7. And we're going to do verses 1 through 7 here um, today. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, jump right in. Good. Hopefully everybody's doing well. And uh, hopefully you're able to attend our Zoom coffee hour on Sunday. Again, 8 o'clock if you want to come to the 9 o'clock Zoom, or 10 o'clockers come to the 10 o'clock Zoom. So uh, more details, and if you've never used Zoom before, a little nervous, and you want to do a test run, let me know, and we could try to figure that out. So I'm more than happy to work with anybody to get you up and running, so if you want to be a part of that. But uh, uh, chapter 7. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is well for a man not to touch a woman, but because of cases of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a set time, to devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. This I say, by way of concession, not of command. I wish that all were as myself am. But each has a particular gift from God, one having one kind and another a different kind. So, okay, so here, and oh, let's just keep going to through verse 10. Or to verse 10. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. <laughs> but each... Oops, but if they are not practicing self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. So <laughs> this is kind of one of those passages where you can just see Paul kind of like, like, I don't know, in my mind, he's kind of like rolling his eyes, like kind of like, all right, so I really need to tell these people about proper relationships um, and, and how to, you know, monogamy is a good idea. <laughs> and... Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna have sex, get married, <laughs> sort of thing. So, yeah, this is this is one of those things where you just you wish you could be like kind of like hear the report that Paul's here and and, and why uh, he's kind of addressing some of these things. But I've got a, just a little section of my in my uh, study Bible here that I thought I'd read. It says the uh, and it's addressing it is well for a man not to touch a woman. The quotation marks in 7.1, which imply the enclosed phrase is not Paul's own opinion, are not in the Greek text. For Paul, marriage is a second best option provided for those who burn, that is, those unable to control their passion. Some scholars have seen a breakthrough to equality between husband and wife in 3 through 5, but the underlying metaphors are drawn from the world of ownership and commerce. Sex is described as a matter of mutual use, a fairly typical attitude in the ancient world. So yeah, there's a, definitely some kind of interesting takes on this, that uh, a man has authority over her body, or a husband has authority over the wife's body, but the wife has authority over the husband's body. And do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a set time. So again, we can dive into all the possible uh, situations, but I just, I just don't think it's helpful. Uh, for us. And so today it's just, this is one of those verses like, okay, they were dealing with some stuff. 
Um, and Paul, Paul tried to address it. And, and yeah, we know that Paul was of the opinion that, you know, if one could serve God, you know, and not be married, that was probably the best way. But kind of makes concession says, well, if people want to be married, if they have that uh, kind of heart and passion for each other, then get married. So, yeah. Anyway, hope all are you well. And uh, <laughs> let's say a word of prayer here. It's kind of a fun, and I stop saying fun, interesting text, intriguing text, different text. So one of those things. So let's say a word of prayer here. Good gracious God, we give thanks for those people in our lives who, 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 who probably do those jobs that we don't really notice that much, but that we're so thankful for them, especially for Roger and Dave. Just be with them and help them to heal and get better and come back so I don't have to shovel snow. And that's not a selfish prayer. <laughs> in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, take care and you guys, we will see you tomorrow.